everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Vlogmas. Do you know how often I've said these words now? 18 times. <laughs> it's the 18th of December and whenever like in my mind always 18 is so close already to 20 and when we hit the 20th like then 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 we're always so close to Christmas so it's like 18th okay it's so advent calendar day 18 here it is pin so let's see if today I will know what it is or if I will be completely clueless like yesterday it's definitely not a soda can, I can feel that, it's something else. Okay, so what is it? Okay, my wish will be fulfilled! Um, it's something I know and it's something that, I don't know, two days ago I actually wished for, so... We've got another um, Star Wars Zoom Zoom pin and this time it's Anakin. <laughs> Anakin Skywalker Episode 3. So with his Sith eyes already. Yeah, but that's a good pin for me. That was literally what I was saying when I got like this medical droid. I said like, why, why can't I get like Padme or, or Anakin or something? And fair enough, here he is. So that's a good one. Okay, I think I have to rearrange the pins a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I can um, get them all onto it because there isn't much space left here. If it's like big pins like soda cans, I might not fit them all into this uh, little space. So that will be a task for today. <laughs> I mean, next to my normal working day. But anyways, um, let's open up the next calendar. 17, are here, the eight. It's now so like uh, deep down here that I have to lift it up so you can see it. 18. What's inside this nice light pink bag. Oh, ah. Why did I package them so good? Ah, yeah, now there. There it is. Oh, it is so cute. It's an LPS snail. I don't have any of this um, mold yet, so like with LPS, it's a modern LPS but, um, and they obviously like use the same molds, like, like as, as ponies also like use the same like poses and then they repaint them and then they are like another new toy, but from this snail I don't have any, so that's super nice. And it's glittery, here the pink parts are glittery and it is really like the color combination also is great. Fresh green, love that. Really happy with this one. So the second LPS of the calendar. Can you even see it now? Probably you. A little bit. Anyways, so for today's video that comes up next, um, I have the um, the other top 10 video that I um, prepared for you so it's like the top 10 um, of my like entire um, vintage toy collection so I show you the top 10 toys or more than that because you know I, I can't choose so have fun with that have a nice Friday and for you also already happy weekend so bye hello everyone and welcome back to a new top 10 video. So the last one that I did was um, top 10 favorite My Little Ponies, like generation one My Little Ponies, yeah. That was probably last one that you saw. Um, and while preparing that one, I also thought about, well, wouldn't it be interesting to do another um, top 10 with like all of my toys, like all of my vintage toys that I'm kind of collecting you know, My Little Pony Generation 1 is my biggest collection, my most like like precious things here. Um, and I could, <laughs> of course, then fill up 
my general uh, favorite top 10 toy collection with just ponies but this is then kind of um, useless to do because um, <laughs> I already did that so I chose to not include many ponies in this general toy uh, top 10 favorites um, list and so you will see a little bit more variety otherwise it's like kind of yeah boring again seeing ponies that you can just take the other video for that um, and I also have to say it's really again just toys that I have not that are on my wish list or that I would like to have or something it's just the ones I have and um, this list could easily be changing like when I get like new toys and stuff like that so and I chose to just include vintage so none of my generation 4 or generation 3 ponies will be in here or none of my like Funko Pops or I don't know if you consider them toys anyway <laughs> um, or of my newer Star Wars uh, figurines none of that just the vintage toys so let's jump into that Number 10 goes to this little fella here. I decided to put a plush toy in, although I'm um, not really a plush collector to be honest, but this little popple is so damn cute. I found it at a flea market. I can also link all the videos that I can think of when I got these toys um, down below. I found them in a flea market, never had any popple before, never had a popple before as a child and found this little putter, putter is his name. And he's so cute and he's in such a good condition. Like his, his fur is like, it, it doesn't look like it has been played with a lot or anything. He's so damn cute. I love the color combination and he's sitting on top of my shelves there with um, with my uh, doodle bear and just so so that the color pops not only he pops out of his popple <laughs> pocket and um, I also found another popple here one of the flower popples at that day but this one definitely takes the cake it's, it's oh, it putter as I said his name so cute his little heart feet and his little pom-pom tail, like, I definitely would have loved to have popples as a child. I didn't. Um, I think they maybe weren't even around anymore. They are from mid of the 80s. Um, so this is my number 10 currently on the list. Number nine is again something that I actually always say I'm not collecting because you know I'm more into the smaller animals with brushable hair like black ponies and human beings are actually not my favorite but I still included a doll on this list number nine goes to my little miss singing mermaid that I found at a flea market and it, it wasn't on my wish list before but like she is Really, she's so precious, especially when I like um, styled her hair and and really uh, when you, when you spend time with a toy and not by playing directly but with like hair play, that's kind of also playing. Then really my admiration always like grows and I love them even more. And then finding out that she works. She sounds so creepy. <laughs> she sounds so creepy. I still love her to death. Like she is such a cutie. I think I would part with some of my other dolls that I since I have uh, gotten. Probably not with her right now. She's she's something very special right now. And I also think her face looks cuter than the other Lil Miss uh, faces. Like Lil Miss is a Mattel toy line from like she's from 1991, I think. Um, so and there were others, but her face even looks cuter. And then I don't have to worry about any clothes getting lost. There's nothing getting lost. I think she the only thing that she had was like kind of a necklace kind of thing made out of uh, fabric but this is like the only thing her tail can't get lost or anything yeah just for the fact how I found her and uh, my love for her has absolutely grown so top uh, nine 
my Little Miss Singing Mermaid. Number eight goes to my Queen Amidala doll figurine, whatever you want that to call that. It's really a, a collector's edition. And I say it is vintage because, well, it's from 1999, you know, it's from episode one timeline. And that was 1999, meaning that's like more than um, 10, more than 20 years ago. And um, you can call something vintage when it has crossed that time. So 20 years and older is considered vintage. So that's why I uh, included her here. And I think I've never shown her uh, on the channel. I got her at a convention. I actually also still have her box. And I know I'm bad. I took her out of the box. She was still like sealed, anything, everything. And this is actually a collector's item. I mean, they are called 1999 Portrait Edition. And there were different costumes of uh, Queen Amidala um, in the series, also like her purple gown or, or like her, her red um, like throne room gown. This is the red senate gown, the black one, and also also others like like the handmaidens and stuff like that. And of course, the presentation here. She has a window. Uh, she would have a huge window here. It looks like she would stand in the palace of Naboo. It, it, you can also like present it like this, but it's so like huge and I don't have place for something like this. So I definitely took her out of the box and it is so great because her like fabric, her clothes are made so well. Every detail is so like perfect. I know that because I have done this costume myself as a cosplay. Well, that was my very first Star Wars costume that I ever did, like in 2009. Yeah, that was 10 years after that. And now we're even 10 years more uh, later in the timeline and I still love that costume. And so she's something very special to me. As I said, I got her at a convention um, from a very nice uh, vendor that I have made friends with since then. And um, they're not necessarily something really expensive if you want to collect them. I think I got her for 30 euro in box and that's kind of what they're going for. I haven't seen many like uh, online in Germany as of lately. But if you look, uh, if you're in the US or if you're even in, in, in the UK, you can find them and they are available online on eBay for around that price range, like mostly all of the time. So actually it would kind of nice to collect more of these. Um, I just haven't never thought about this actually until I started this uh, video to pick out which, which um, toys to put in. So Queen Amidala, um, portrait edition 1999 toy, toy collectible. It's really more a collectible, right? It even, <laughs> it even says for adult collectors. So yes, for adult collectors on my top 10 place number eight. Okay, let's keep it going. It's a Polly Pocket. Um, I have, like my Polly Pocket collection has grown quite a bit uh, since I kind of started collecting them. Um, and I found a lot of them at flea markets, which is great because then it's also a great memory to have them. This one actually not. This one um, I was gifted by my friend Zenia. Uh, from her childhood collections and uh, I chose to pick this one on place number seven because it's not that not one that I have like a connection like childhood wise with I didn't have this one and I don't remember this from my childhood or anything but this is just purely because it is so beautiful <laughs> it is this book and it actually is called um, Glitter Island Side, you can see this beautiful picture of like uh, yeah, an island it's 
very warm weather so like I don't know in the South Sea or somewhere wherever and you put it open and it even reveals a beautiful um, like island like um, landscape with seashells and turtles and palms and and it's actually I think it is complete I've got two tolly tolly poly dolls I've got the uh, monkey, <laughs> I've got a turtle, and this opens here, there's another house, where's actually Polly, Polly is here, and the whole thing glitters, the whole thing glitters, I think I want to show it to you um, in even better lighting than what I can do with this, so um, this is just perfect for me, like um, I love like summer island vibes, and it is glittery and it is a beautiful beautiful poly pocket in this book format it's very difficult to close because you have to store the figurines really um, thoughtfully <laughs> so this got my place number seven And then I was like, oh my goodness, there's the toy line. I actually want to include the whole toy line <laughs> in this um, top 10 video. But this is cheating, right? I cannot say yanked. And place number six goes to the whole toy line. <laughs> so I decided to pick out some of them and show them to you in different places. And it is actually Lady Lovely Locks. I want to include Lady Lovely Locks herself. This is the Pretty Sparkle Lady Lovely Locks uh, from Wave 3, so the last re uh, release of Lady Lovely Locks in 1989. Um, I'm not collecting Barbies, I'm not collecting dolls. <laughs> and then she's here like, and, and I show, her, uh, show you other dolls. I'm getting more and more into it, especially when they are so damn cute, like all the Lady Lovely Locks things. And then like, I found her at a flea market, like just laying there. I definitely link the video down below. <laughs> it will be just like video, video, video. I found her on camera, like for two euro, including the dress. I love how I restored her hair. It glitters. I mean, she's missing, she's missing a crown. She's missing the shoes, like, all that, okay, but I have the main character of that toy line, which is, it's really growing because like literally every little detail of Lady Lovely Locks is like speaking to my aesthetic mind, to my aesthetic heart, like everything because again, it's not a toy line I knew as a child, but like the artwork, the characters, the, the, the everything, like the dolls look to me way cuter than for example Barbie dolls and all the animal friends that are kind of more going into like what ponies are, so animals, brushable hair and everything is glittery and cutesy and it is still, it's still not that typical like what toy lines in the 90s were about like fashion and yeah I'm going to a concert or whatever cool it is really like dreamy it is fairy tale like they're living in a fairy tale land they are princes and 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 um, she has handmaidens handmaidens maidens and not handmaidens <laughs> and those animals and the horse and it's all like pastel glittery lovely lovely looks so um, so she is definitely my number six. So 
I talked about cheating and uh, including a complete toy line in here. It is another place, okay? It is now, we are, we are on place number five. And number five goes to something else of the Lady Lovely looks. And I want to show you all of them. Goes to my curly kittens. I couldn't decide for one, you know, like, mm, is what I love. As I said, actually, like my main focus in collecting is like, same as the ponies, small animals vinyl animals with brushable hair and cute faces and details and colors and I'm not a big cat person to be honest like my family is like we're a dog family we're having dogs I love dogs I'm not that good with cats who cares these are just toys you know how cute can it get like these are the curly kittens from Lady Lovely Locks which were released in the same wave as the pretty sparkle Lady Lovely Locks which was the one I showed you before so 1989, this is, let's say if I get the names correct, this is um, Creamy Coat, this is Sunny Soft, this is Purple Purr and Pinky Paws. <laughs> yes, I got it right. Um, and actually this one I found first, she's in my collection for a little bit longer, maybe two years, I think I found her in 2018. Like for 1 euro 50 on eBay, which is like a good deal, definitely, uh, because they tend to get really expensive. The average, I would say, for one of these little kitties would be around 40 euro. Um, I would never pay this price. So this was a lucky find because like the guy didn't know what it was like on eBay, definitely not. I think he just... Then I found these three together. I can link that video down below, or I already have linked that video down below because it is the same video I found the Lady Lovely Locks at the flea market. I found these in a second hand shop. I couldn't believe it. I found them together, all of them together for a really good price. I think she wanted 4 euro per, per cat or 6, six euro per cat. I, I don't even remember. It was a very good deal and, and together with her, like, um, Hello, they are like, they will always be super precious to me. And like, how can you resist these, these kitties? I think I'm missing two. I'm missing the blue one and I'm missing the um, peach colored one. And of course, I'm missing all of the um, pixie tails. I don't have a single pixie tail. Pixie tail were these small, um, hair clips that were actually also shaped like animals, different animals, and they had a long um, tail, like a long uh, hairy hair tail, and you would stick them into her hair or into those hair here, um, and they can get really expensive on their own. They're just like a little hair clip with a little strand of hair, and they cost around 5 to 10 euro each, so I don't have any of them. I always hope to find one of flea markets, but anyway, I'm blobbing. I love Lady Lovely Locks. I could have included this whole toy line. I have some more lovely items, but let's get on to the next spot. again something where I'm uh, cheating a little bit but also then not because I'm not including the whole toy line, toy line although I could. I love keepers and I decided to give the next spot on my list so number four we're already on number four to my keepers horses. Not only because actually I'm a horse person, I love horses and ponies and everything and Keepers are such a cool toy line. Keepers made by Tonka, um, 1986 I think it started until 1993 something. Um, then they were made by, not by Tonka anymore, but by um, Kenner. So this one's more or less made by Kenner, but anyways they're the same mold. And I keep finding them at flea markets and everything. So that's why I'm having like a little, of, a little bit of an army <laughs> going on here. Uh, this horse is called um, Diamond, so these three are really the same. This one is, as you see, another color variant. Oh, she doesn't have a name, she's just called Gold Pony. 
and this was my first one she's kind of complete I also have the finer I have her brush I have the key because you can open the saddle up and you can stick your treasures in there that's the point of keepers you can secure your your belongings in there and she also has the uh, reins here she was a little bit more pricey I got her at a convention she was my very first big keeper and then I found this one at a flea market this year also like for a very good price like five euro she also had still her reins that's interesting um, but nothing else oh well also the uh, the brush it's also in here uh, then I found this one, which is uh, kind of the body color, a little bit better than this one because this one is kind of a little bit discolored. Yeah, it looks more orange. This one at the thrift store or second hand toy store, let's, let's call it more like this. And uh, at the same time I have ordered this one online and let's see if my Keeper's Horse collection is growing. I love them, I love them really. Um, the only thing is they are big keepers, they take up a lot of space. I also love that the baby keepers... I cannot include every toy of my toy collection in this top 10 list. So, number 4, my keeper's horse army. Polly Pocket of all time and I bet I have showed it to you in different other videos already. This is also one that um, I think I have uh, for the longest time in my adult toy collection, let's call it like this. Um, it is the Polly Pocket or, or Polly uh, Fairy Tale Wonderland. It is just amazing. It lights up. Can you see here is also a switch, you can also turn it off. But normally when you close it and then open it, it will be turned on, it has batteries, it works and it has so many amazing details and it's just huge, you know, it's chunky, it's, it's, it's not like something like this, it's like big and it's, it's glittery, there are see-through parts, there are so many moving parts here, oh, this Ferris wheel. Or here down below uh, it has boxes to open there's a car inside it has a lot of dolls in there which I bet they're not all belonging in here I'm not that good and uh, with um, like putting the correct dolls to the correct um, compacts and stuff mainly because like as much as I love Polly Pocket my main focus on collecting is pony so that's where I know most about and with Polly Pockets I don't exactly know if for example she is really belonging here. <laughs> I could look it up but then again I would forget it again in I don't know, some days after I looked it up. Um, it's not only here because I love it to death because of the look and how big it is and I also remember that one of my friends had this when I was little, I didn't have this, so, but I can remember that I think one of my friends had it or I just remembered from, from the commercials on TV, I don't know, it's from 1993, which would right, be right about my alley, I would have been around 5 or 4 years old at that point, so. Um, and the other thing why I love it so much is also how I got it. <laughs> Actually, I gave away all of my Polly Pockets to my nieces. I have two, or, uh, actually I have three nieces, but one of them is already, like, she was already born when I was still a child, so um, I was six years old, she was born, so I gave most of my toys then to her. Um, and my other niece, who is the next <laughs> in line, so to say, she is still a child, and um, I asked her then one day when I started kind of collecting those, those vintage girl toys again, uh, do you know is, is there something like in your in your toy uh, shelves that's that's called Polly Pocket because 
um, maybe there is something that still was mine and she, she looked it up she she said like I know what you mean but I haven't found it so I was like well they are probably gone same as my ponies um, and one day <laughs> Christmas I unpacked one of my presents and this thing and another Polly Pocket was, was, was probably was, was just there like she gifted me these Polly Pockets and said hey look what I found your old Polly Pockets and I'm like hmm, these are not my old Polly Pockets I exactly know which ones I had and this one and the other one it's, it's a purple one I didn't have but she had them laying in their toy shelves so I don't know like where did she get like I we, we have no idea probably my other niece like the oldest one um, I have gotten this when she was younger from other kids or something because they are not um, like they are both way younger than I am so it's not their um, generation so they couldn't have bought them or something so it's kind of a mystery but I got this for Christmas and one was one of my best Christmas presents ever like because most of the time no nobody really surprises me for Christmas or for birthday I always say what I want and, and or I get it even myself that's the normal way um, because they don't really know what to get me they don't have an, an, a slight, slightest idea of all of that or of Star Wars or of, so it's it's normally not, not a big surprise but this was like <gasps> so thank you Mareike for giving this to me so this is number three Number two, what will it be? My favorite, My Little Pony. I bet you have, <laughs> you you thought I would put her in number one, in place number one, right? How, how, how could it be more perfect than my favorite My Little Pony? This is Half Note from the Rock and Beat Pony series um, from 1989, I think, uh, she was released. And I had her as a child. She was my childhood pony. Not this one. Because as I said, I gave all of my toys away and most of them are not existing anymore. Nobody knows where they went. Um, so I obviously this is just a replacement. But still she is uh, in my adult collection now since, since way over five years, I think, definitely. No, not way over. I think I got her in 2015. I think so. And she is just like she's perfection. Like she used to be my favorite My Little Pony as a child. number one um, on my favorite vintage toys of my collection list I want to give a shout out to some honorable mentions uh, as you saw like most of the stuff was really girly uh, ponies kitties dolls except for the Star Wars um, doll which actually also is a doll <laughs> so I also love everything um, Ha that has to do with dinosaurs so I have to show you some of my dinosaur toys although I really couldn't fit them in it was just 10 places or 10 spots to to uh, give to my toys for example this girl she is one of my childhood dinosaurs 
Ah, the Parasaurolophus, uh, she's made by Simba, I think, so it's not, it's not um, uh, Jurassic Park or, I don't know, Dino Riders or something. But I had her, she was my favorite, I called her Rosie. I got her when we visited the um, Museum for Natural History in Berlin. Like, I'm from Berlin, so I visited that museum very often, but I think I got her when we were there for the very first time, when I was like three years old or something. I always had a, had a heart for dinosaurs, like, I knew all the dinosaur names like right away before I could even like pronounce other words. So I knew that she was a Parasaurolophus and um, I actually gave away also my dinosaurs um, to my nieces. But other than with the ponies or with my Polly Pockets, I was lucky enough that she still had them. Or Marike had them, although I gave them to my other niece Nadine. Um, and so I could get her back. So that's that's perfect. And another dinosaur, actually, uh, as an honorable mention, this one is an original vintage Jurassic Park dinosaur. I got got him at a um, convention last year. Could actually link down that video. Yes, I could. And the cool thing about this one is actually not only it's a cool looking dinosaur. It's Jurassic Park. I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. Um, but it is also, you can see it in the Toy Story movie, in the first Toy Story movie. Uh, this one is included, it's one of Sid's toys, you know Sid, the evil bad boy that's like the, the villain in uh, Toy Story 1 that treats his, his toys like horribly, deforms them and puts them together with others and, and this, the head is transplanted onto the body of a doll in that movie and it's exactly this blue up Tyrannodon. So that's why I wanted to show you these two, just to let you know I'm also a huge fan of dinosaurs. Just couldn't fit them in that list. I mean, that, that, that would have meant I have to, like, I don't know, don't show you the keepers or don't don't show you the Lady Lovely Locks or I don't know. Um, and something else, another toy line that I really love and I would love to collect more. I just want to show you as an honorable mention these two. Uh, they are from a toy line called Little Pretty. So this is a little pretty kitty, cat again, and this is a little pretty puppy, a baby one, so a dog. And you might think, well, they look an awful lot like these. Aren't they just the same? No, because both Mattel, this one's a little bit older. The Lady Lovely Locks uh, were from uh, the uh, end of the 80s, so this one's from 89. And I think the um, Little Pretties were produced a little bit later. Do they have a date? It also says 89. But anyways, they actually used the molds of their other toy line and created a new toy line that they wanted to compete a little bit more with My Little Pony at the time because they have symbols on their, I don't know, flanks. Do you call that flanks with uh, cats and dogs? I don't think so. And they are like so cute. I just have these two because A, you never find them over here in Germany and B, if you find them they are really expensive. I mean they are also very expensive probably all over uh, the globe and I don't actually know why. Maybe they were, were not sold that good because still My Little Pony was in the lead of that kind of toys. But they are all super cute kitties and dogs with like brushable hair um, and beautiful bright colors. I just have these two. I just couldn't include them in a list because, well, they don't mean so much to me. I would love to get more little pretties for sure. What's number one on my list here? What's my favorite toy of my vintage toy collection? is my childhood favorite plush toy, Poppy. <laughs> That's not the name of the toy line or anything. I do know nothing about the toy line because it's just a generic rainbow bunny from the late 80s. I was born in 1988 and I have this since I can think. I think I got it from one of my grandpas um, that was able to travel to um, 
like the western part of, of um, Berlin or Germany already because I'm born in 88 and I think I already got it when I was like one year old or not even a year old I, I don't know probably before uh, Germany was reunited so um, but I'm pretty sure that this is not a toy from the former GDR because I was born in the former GDR um, so I think it's a western toy but anyways just a generic rainbow bunny but my favorite toy of all time. I had a lot of bunny toys growing up, or bunny plushies. I always wanted to have bunnies for plushies. I mean, I don't know, a lot of other toys were like horses. I loved horses, like ponies and Barbie horses and stuff. But for plush toys, it was always bunnies. And I called him Hoppy, he was always a him, so, so it wasn't a girl, it was a him to me. And I think it is the only toy that I constantly kept of my original toys from way back when because yes I have like this one kind of bag which was my favorite childhood pony but this is not the one that I played with as a child yes I have yeah, my Rosie bag but I gave her away she wasn't in my possession for a very long time until I got her back I think last year um, but I've always kept Hoppy like I gave away so many of my toys and all of that but I always kept him and I would never give away him so he was always he had always a place on my shelf among my Pokemon plushies or just on my bed or on my couch wherever it was before I um, decided to put him in that display because I think it works really well he used to be way more pink I think this is faded a lot and of course he, he was in the washing machine like I don't know hundreds of times or something <laughs> hopefully not hundreds of times but a lot also the tag isn't existing anymore and anything but of toys that I just recently acquired um, that are just in my favorite list because of the look or because I love the whole toy line or because I have them for sentimental reasons so it's it's a mix of both and I hope you enjoyed um, my top 10 of my my top 10 list of my favorite toys of my vintage toy collection as of December 2020 so who knows what I like develop into if my toy collection toy collecting obsession is growing even more if or if it slows down a little bit if I get tons of more toys or I don't this is the stand as of right now and I hope you had fun watching if you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you like these kind of videos um, maybe subscribe to the channel if you are not right now and tell me about your favorite toys of your toy collection I would love to know that uh, what are your favorite ponies what are your favorite other like Barbies I also had a lot of Barbies when I was young but I'm not collecting them at the moment anyways see you real soon may the force be with you bye